Hello, sumo fans. I'm here, and I'm messing with this crazy microphone, so I hope that it works properly. You guys can let me know when you show up in the chat. So I'm going to hang out here for a little bit, wait and see if people come. This is the Taki K Show tribute stream that I had promised when we heard that uh, the retirement was imminent. Hello, Mitch, and hello, JJ. Hello, Habob Gob. Hello, Monster. Sweet, the mic is working. So, talk about the man, Taki K Show. I hope you guys have been liking the pictures. I've been pulling them off the uh, Sunday morning sumo show Discord, so shout out to you guys for that. I'm going to try something different tonight. Um, I've got some videos queued up, and so hopefully um, we're going to be able to play them reaction style because people do all these reaction videos and they don't get taken down. So we're going to go to Sumo Kyokai's website and look at a couple videos. I've got a couple of articles that I want to read to you guys, and we can sort of, I'm going to read some of those. We can chat about those, and then I'm going to be debuting our first W, our first 42 Opinions short, which is a Taki Keisho tribute that is only 59 seconds long. I think it's amazing, personally, but um, the aspect ratio is screwed up, so apparently I can't make it a short yet. So we're just going to play it as a regular video. So look forward to that as well. <coughs> Monsters watching the debate tonight. Well... That's okay. You can have that in one corner and you can have us in the other corner. And I will tell you, you will have to take a break for 59 seconds to see the awesome Taki Keisho tribute video. Then you can go back. Hello, Stargazer. Good to see you. So, what do I want to do first? Do we want to... Let's talk a little bit about the retirement. Then I can get into the article... We'll get a little time to get people in here before I play some of the videos in case people want to watch. I don't have enough beer on hand to watch. <laughs> I would stay here for the programming. You know, debates really don't tell you anything. They actually are just like Hollywood entertainment. I can't stomach them, so I don't watch them. I'll watch the highlights later on. I'd much rather sit here and talk about Takakesha with you fine people. So, um, when we did the recap show, that was ridiculously difficult for me because I didn't think Take Keisho was going to announce his retirement before we did our recap show. So, I figured I was going to just talk a little bit about him in the 42. He'd retire after the fact, and then I could do the stream. And instead, he decides to retire like a couple days before we're recording the recap. And we only give about... I'd say the average wrestler gets about seven minutes. Like a wrestler, there's a lot to talk about. We'll get about 12 minutes. A little bit to talk about is seven minutes. Some guy at the bottom who hasn't done much is about two minutes. So I'm like, I can't really talk about Taki Keisho in this format the way that I want to talk about Taki Keisho. So I just felt so disappointed in the recap itself, because if that's the only video that anybody's ever going to watch, then I didn't do Taki Keisho justice. So I had to spend an entire week working on this tribute video because uh, I needed to get that out of my system. So you guys will see my heart in this video. JJ says, the funniest thing was a commentator coming into our stream and asking an Australian and a Canadian if they were voting for Trump or Harris. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Um, probably most of us are American in here, so they probably weren't expecting that. Um, but you guys are cool. Like, I like the non-Americans that are here that are like, yeah, we like these silly Americans that talk about sumo. Sup, Michael? Mitch, I will watch the debate later. Songified once Shmo gets it out. I can't even, oh, I can't even, I can't do it. Uh guys, I don't like politics. It stinks. 
and all politicians, they grate on me. They grate on me. It's just fighting and getting your message across that way. Love a good fight. All right, so back to my little spiel here. So I feel like this Takakesha retirement is way too raw and way too quick. And how in the world do you prepare for sumo this way? I mean, the guy just turned 28 two months ago. And November's his tournament. And all of a sudden, you're seeing all these pictures of him in the tracksuit, which I can't handle, in a suit, walking around with the bag. Like, he doesn't look right. <laughs> he does not look right in the tracksuit. He kind of looks like a little boy compared to everybody else. And part of that is probably because he's really short. But the other part of it is he's <laughs> he's too young. He looks like a 28-year-old. Think about this for a second. What were you guys doing at 28? Now, I'm way older than 28. I'll just give you that. Um, I wasn't like the second highest rank in, you know, a professional sport. And then my career is over. None of this makes any sense. And I don't know how to process that, like, November's going to come and Takakesho is not going to be there. In fact... Once a wrestler retires, that name doesn't even exist anymore. Takakesha was gone. And we're probably going to see him standing in the hallway in the tracksuit. Which I will like because it means I'll see him. But, man, it doesn't make sense that he's not wrestling anymore. I think it's going to take a really long time. A really long time to get over this. It's, it's kind of like, and I don't want to be too over dramatic here, but it's kind of like a sudden death because it really is the end of Takakesho and now he's, what is it, Mito Wagawa? So, you know, it's, it's weird. It's weird. <laughs> Easy Macro says, long live Keisho. So sad he retired, carried the world of sumo by himself during the COVID times. Yeah, and it really bums me out when I read <laughs> very ignorant comments I should stop reading the comment section, but like people got to get over that Hanka thing. You can define the whole guy, the guy's entire career because you didn't like that. Get out of here. Like, who are you? Who are you to make that kind of judgment? I think he was so burned out. He didn't want to wait for a particular timing. Just get it over with. Yeah, I kind of said with John in the recap, and it could be either way, that once he made the decision, it was just like, let me just get it in there. Let me just be done with this. I don't want to change my mind, you know? He looks like he lost a little roundness. He does look like he lost weight already. It's only been like two weeks. It's not going to be the same. He became my favorite ricochet. His indomitable spirit was awesome. It's not going to be the same. And, you know, here's the thing, right? All wrestlers bring their own unique aspect. There will never be another one of that wrestler. But boy, is that true for Takakesho. Like, you're going to feel it. You're going to feel it when you don't have that guy who's just bringing the raw spirit. Not everybody does. And Keisho kind of came from a, the old way. And we're going to read an interview in a second. But he came from the old way. That whole old guard is now gone. And he should be in the prime of his career right now. So <sighs> you're going to miss him a lot more. You guys all know, but the, the crap talkers, they're going to miss him. They're, gonna, they're not going to be able to hate on him anymore. It's better for him. He's probably going to live with a lot of pain for many years. Oh, absolutely, it's better for him. Absolutely. I mean, it's a bitter pill because I will miss him, but I want him to live. And honestly, guys, from everything that I've read, he really was risking his life continuing to do sumo. Like, he could have been paralyzed. He could have been killed. I didn't want to see him end in a wheelchair. So this really is better for him. And I'm rooting for him. And I'm going to find him wherever he is on the internet. Like figure out who he's coaching and all that stuff. Um, so it's, it's bittersweet. Because this <laughs> living with chronic pain and fighting with chronic pain 
really does drain the life out of you. He deserves a better life than he was living. I hope we see Keisho interacting with guys like Hakuho and the Blue Jackets. See, I'm going to be living for those moments. I'm just going to be like looking in the background and, oh, there's, there's Taki Keisho. He's talking to Hakuho. Like, that's going to be like my little Easter eggs. Okay, it's Mina Togawa. Oh, that's going to be so hard. I don't, you guys got to give me some time before I can go there. Bro, Taki Keisho is like eight months younger than me. Wild. Yeah. Yeah, and he just turned 28, and his career is over. But, you know, there's a, there's a flip side to that that we're going to get into. Don't know, haven't gotten that far yet. Just hoping I don't fall down that fateful flight of stairs that will end me by 28. Oh, jeez. Let's not get, let's just not get too doomer here. That's what I'm telling you. Yeah, see, JJ, you, you're doing sumo. I mean, think about it. Your your whole career, it's just already over. Wait, what? A guy with a chronic neck problem didn't want to charge in head first into a 400-pound guy for the second time in a day? Yeah, I guess not. Guess not. Maria's going to be like Todoroki's mom and my hero getting PTSD every time she sees Bouchot's on. Yes. I, I will stay away from the stove when I see Bouchot's on. Is the next Ura compliment or an insult? Anything with Ura's name next to it is a compliment. And Habab Gab agrees with me. Don't worry, you can cheer for Diet Takakesho, or I mean Bushos on now. No, 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 no. Debut of Shimpan Takakesho has to warn a live reaction YouTube short. Oh, it will. When I figure out how to actually get the aspect ratio right, we'll have a YouTube short. Right now, we have a 59-second Takakesho tribute that I'm going to be showing. And it's not a short because it wouldn't accept in the short. So it's kind of stupid. <laughs> so I will make a real short in a little while. Bushozan is also 28. Come on, get out of here. It's nuts. It's absolutely nuts. Speaking of my hero... Um, I'm going to be pointing my finger at Hoshuryu and saying, you're next. You better bring that spirit that made me fall in love with Takekesho because there's going to be a huge gap of spirit with him gone. Have you made a submission for the Rikishi popularity poll? Of course. Absolutely. And I made sure to put Shonana Umi as my um, least favorite, which I've never done that before. But I had to for just for kicks. <laughs> vote Takikesho for popularity poll. Yes. I've been telling everyone. Get out there and vote Takikesho. I'm glad I didn't miss the live. Thank you, 42. Appreciate your streams. Absolutely easy, Macro. I feel like we have a lot of Takikesho fans and or, you know, people who appreciate Takikesho in here. So that we could all get together, have a good time, enjoy the, the good moments of Takikesho. I'm literally going up to people I don't know and making them vote Takakesho. That's amazing. That's super amazing. So you guys tell me. Do you want to go over the retirement article or do you want to see the Takakesho short? You guys vote. If you want the Takakesho short, put a one in the chat. If you want the articles first, put a two in the chat. And I will wait until I see you vote. I believe we all know who my least favorite vote went to. I have a very funny video for you tonight, Mitch. You've probably already seen it, but you probably forgot how Toby Zaro acts in this video. And as I was watching it, all I could think about was you. <laughs> so uh, I'm, we're going to have fun. As long as nobody takes down the stream. <clears throat> all right, so I have a one and a two and an either, a two. Hello. Okay. The three threw me off. Okay. 42, two. Okay. So we want to do the article first. That's what everyone's saying. Article first. Takakesho short after that. Let's do it. So first, we're going to do this. So I want to give you guys a warning. If for some reason they take this stream down, which they shouldn't, but you never know with YouTube, I will just start a new stream. It won't be like the recap. 
So we're going to start off by looking at the actual Japanese uh, retirement press conference. It's completely in Japanese with no subtitles, so I'm just going to show it to you so you have a visual. Then I'll read you the best translation that I have. <laughs> まず初めに師匠常盤山より挨拶がありますえ高景勝本日をもちまして引退させていただくことになりましたこれからあの港川を襲名いたしましてそう so, right there we've got the this is retirement and what his new name is going to be which is still hard to say for me even though i just heard it i'm going to skip a little bit so we can see the k show あ、もう着きました。どのような思い出今回引退を決意されたんでしょうか。まあ、あの小学校 3年生から相撲 Okay, so I can probably surmise which question that was, but I don't know. I know that he's talking about he didn't have, he didn't have the desire and the, the he didn't have the ability anymore to fight for Yokozuna. So this probably was the question, why did you decide to retire? To which he said, I'm burnt out. Since third grade, I've been practicing sumo and dreaming of becoming Yokozuna. But now that I have lost the energy and strength to become Yokozuna, I've decided to retire. Pretty sure that's what we just had. So getting into that for a second, um, John and I had talked about this. And um, we had decided that that's, that's what mattered to Take Keisho. What mattered to him was you know, his effort to become Yokozuna, that was the role once he became Ozeki. And once that was no longer possible, he was going to retire. He wasn't going to be like all these other Ozeki we've seen who were going to fight, you know, like Takeyasu, Tochinoshin. He was going to be more like a Goedo. And there's the proof right there. And you can see he's kind of choked up, which, you know, makes me choked up as well. The Sumo Kyokai channel has a longer 15-minute video about Keisha with matches from his debut. Yes, I linked it in the community tab. So yes, go to Sumo Kyokai. Guys, go to Wikipedia, copy the kanji of Taki Keisha's name, put it in Sumo Kyokai, and you get all the Taki Keisha videos, which I have done tonight, and we will look at that. I am the coach. This dude is retiring. Makes me sad since I could use his paycheck to fix the floor. Well, it probably does make his coach sad to lose an Ozeki, especially one who's only 28 years old. My goodness. <laughs> I'm just glad to see him in good health. I agree 100%. And we're, we're going to get into some more stuff regarding that. So let's go back to this and see if I can figure out what questions being asked. Hmm. Well, I けがを もどかしい気持ちはありました。
、その辺は少しもどかしい気持ちがありました。最終的に引退をこう決意されたのはいつですか。えっと、十一日目の、えっと、夜に。えー、と師匠の方に引退させてくださいとあの言いに行かせていただきましたあの途中、序盤に休場されてそこから11日目まではかなり葛藤もありましたかいやもう心の中ではもう決まっていた部分があるんですけど、まあ、もう一度冷静になって自分を考えてみたり。振り,返振り返る時間が少し欲しかったので。Alright, I'm pausing it because we want to make sure this is like reaction style.、Um... Oh man, Habab Gab. If you even just look at the pictures I've been posting in the community tab, he does not look like a fighter now. He looks like a. like so small and so calm and. It's like this guy is a vicious fighter, but at the same time, there's this gentle side to him that you now are getting to see now that the game faces off. So I couldn't translate any of that. Oh, he's, he's very sad to retire. God, it, it's such a gut punch. I couldn't translate any of that. So we're just going to go with the things、uh, that I know here. And the reason I'm playing it for you guys, though, is just to hear him speak. You know, we, some might be able to translate. I can't. It's only certain words that I know, and then I can go from there, but I couldn't, I couldn't understand any of them. So I'm going to read these things.、Um, you suffered from many injuries. I was only as good as my injuries allowed me to be. So when I couldn't perform to my full potential, I felt it was the end of me. Was dealing with your neck injury the hardest thing you had to do? I was able to do what I loved and was aiming to do, so I didn't feel it was particularly hard, but it was frustrating. What do you mean by frustrating? Since I was young, I've been able to give 100% to prepping for the next tournament, but in recent times, I haven't been able to do some of the things I valued most, even if I wanted to. So that was frustrating. So、um, maybe that's what they were saying. We can、uh, play a little bit more. See if I can figure out any of that. Try to come back and see your guys' s chat. <laughs> nice to hear him speak. He rarely ever used to. Yeah, he did not do many interviews in his entire career. If I saw an interview, I was like, whoa, Taki Keisho interview, which is why I was like, you know what? Even though we don't speak Japanese, we're going to watch this interview anyway. Taki Keisho looks like a henchman in his suit. <laughs> He needs to hang out with the big guys now, like, you know, Kakiryu and Hakuho. Taki Keisho looks muggable now. He is not. <laughs> I know, right? Could you imagine if you were the guy who thought, oh, look at this easy mark, and it's Taki Keisho? Yeah, you're, you're gonna you're gonna have a bad night. So let's play a little bit more, see if we can figure out any translations, because I got more English for us. 11日目の夜という日になりました9歳から相撲を始めた時に横綱になることだけそれだけを考えてきたんですけどまあ手をいっぱい伸ばしたんですけど、えー、届きませんでした真珠であるので勝っても負けても淡々と。勝って喜ばない、負けて、えー、くよくよしない、気持ちを一定に保つことだけ考えて、まあ、やってきました。最後までそれはつ貫けましたか。まあ、それは死ぬまで修行だと思いますどうですか、10年間、土俵人生、悔いはないですか。全くないです。もう。燃え尽きたので。素晴らしい相撲人生を歩ませていただきました。まあ、あの大関を決めた。えー、千秋楽の。えー、年の土地の親戚と。えー、の一番が。まあ、すべて印象に残ってるんですけど。まあ、特に印象に残って。
大丈夫本当にやるかやられるかの勝負だったのでまあ前の日に自分の人生が決まるなと思って挑んだ一番でしたあれで勝って2桁の白星を当てて大関をつかんだわけですがやはりその一番が一番そうですねまあ自分との戦いが土地の神関とやる前にあったんですけどまあそれに打ち勝てたということがまあ今でも自分の誇りですあの非常にもう高景勝は I don't know if、uh, YouTube is really delayed. So I'm going to let you guys watch this and then I'll comment again. Okay. The way that this streaming thing looks, it seems like,、uh, I don't know. If I over talk the interview, I'm sorry. Because it's showing me two different things here. So, anyway, I do know what he was talking about there. So, I can translate this for you guys now. Okay, let's find the question. What was your most memorable bout? All of them are memorable, but that fight with Tochinoshi and Senshuraku, where I first gained my Ozeki title, was particularly memorable. It was really a case of do or die. The day before, I felt that match would decide my life. I had a battle with myself before the fight proper, and I'm still proud of what I was able to overcome him. Now I'll read some of your guys' comments. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing if the development of his young stablemate, Waka no Sho, now that Take Keisho can be more of a mentor with less on his plate. I can't wait to see the developing talent. Because I think Keisho has a really brilliant mind and he takes this so seriously that I think it's perfect for him to be a coach. Yeah, Koto Iho, Waka no Sho, and Hanafusa, who were high school rivals and debuted at the same time, or are starting to really ramp up. I think Hanafusa is Hana no Umi now. Yep, you're right. Yeah, I heard of Hanafusa. So, good thing you're telling me the name has changed. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to read more of this interview. It's really weird how the、uh, stream appears to me. It doesn't show me properly when this video is playing. So, let me read more of this and then I'll play more of the video. Did you always believe you were an Oshizumo Rikishi? Early on, the size and power of the Makauchi Rikishi overwhelmed me. I was less than 175 centimeters tall, and I felt I had entered a strange world. But now that I've entered that world, I had to be prepared to fight. If I wrestled the same as my opponents, I wouldn't win. Thus, I decided that the way forward was Oshizumo, and I'm happy about that. So, Taka Keisho knew right away that.、Um, He was at a complete height disadvantage and he made the choice to do things the way he does, the sort of cannonball tachi eye, which obviously led to the neck injury that ended his career. But had he stayed small and tried belt techniques like Midori Fuji, maybe he never makes Ozeki. So you never know when you're making these choices what was the right move. In some ways, as you look at his career, he might have made all the best moves if his neck heals and he goes on to live a pain free life. Because so many guys walk in that dohyo and they're not going to be successful. It's just not. Everybody's so strong and so powerful and so skilled. Who says it's going to be you? So, Taika Keisha took a gamble 
and his career ended short, but he did become a great Ozeki. So maybe he made the right move, even though we're not going to get to see him wrestle much longer or any longer. So let me, um, let me read the rest of this interview. Um, actually, you know what? Maybe I'll skip ahead past this coach because I don't have the translations of his coach here. Okay, let's go back to Takeke Show.ま、やっぱり武士道精神を持った昭和自分が少し精神的にマイナスになったりとか、そういう時にファンの声援とか、え、タオルとかをこう掲げてくれると本当に心から<笑> Okay, so we're going to pause it right there. Um, I ha- I'm just going to read these, this translation out of order because uh, I don't know if they even f- did the whole thing. So we're just going to get through these questions because they were interesting. Did you have any conflicting thoughts before day 11? No, there was a part of me that had already made up my mind when I went Cujo on day three, but I wanted some time to cool down and think about it again. The decision came on the night of day 11. Um, you retired very young at the age of 28. So they've asked him this again. I wasn't wrestling my age and I felt I had lost the stamina and energy I was aiming for. So I decided it was time for me to pull out. During your Ozeki promotion ceremony, you said you would respect the Bushido spirit and devote yourself to the way of sumo. What is the way of sumo? I have always only been thinking of maintaining a constant and stable state of mind. Do you have any regrets? No regrets at all. I've burnt myself out and I've had a wonderful life as a rikishi. You were a member of Takanohana Beya when you first joined Sumo. How do you feel about having two masters? I'm grateful to Tokiwayama Oyakata for taking over my former stable and bringing me to where I am today. Your father has worked closely with you since you were a young child. Though I did not achieve our goal of becoming Yokozuna, I am satisfied, and I believe my father was satisfied too. How will you teach your future students? I am not particular about any style of sumo, as each individual is suited to their own style. However, even though it is a little unsuitable for this current era, I want to bring up Rikishi with the Bushido spirit which I learned from my Showa predecessors. What would you like to say to your fans? When I was in a mentally negative state, I was always grateful for the cheers and towels from the fans. Ordinarily, I would give 100% for the bout, but with the fans, I was able to give 120%. What is your perspective of the Yokozuna rank? I wanted to see what it was like to be Yokozuna, 
but even though I tried everything, I wasn't able to reach it. I just did what I could. Did your family have any influence on your decision to retire? I reached that decision on my own, but as they had supported my dream, I told them I was quitting. A ricochet from Nishon Oseki Ichiman is gunning for Ozeki promotion. What do you have to say to that younger ricochet? I have done what I have done with the sumo I inherited from my predecessors, so it is not proper for me to say anything, but I hope they understand the words of those who came before them and pass it on to the next generation. What do you want to do now that you've retired? I have been immersed in sumo since I was a child, so I want to work hard and train ricochet who can contribute to the kyokai. Um, and then there's some comments on here from some other people, which we'll get to in a minute, but that's basically what I have for translations. Let's see what you guys have to say. How Bob Gob says his arms are too short for belt sumo, third shortest Ozeki, 175 centimeters at that time. Toya Noshima was similarly shaped with short arms and had good belt techniques, but never threatened to make Ozeki. I think Takikesho did a good job min-maxing his style of sumo to fit his frame. Sometimes it's not the size, it's how you use it. Yeah, I mean, Takikesho made a career out of, like, possibly nothing. I mean, people did not believe in him. If you go back and watch the old NHK videos in particular, people didn't believe in him. He, it's just like he's too short, he's, he's always injured, you know, all he does is push sumo. There was always a... But he's not this, but he's not that, but he's not this, but he's not that. And he that never, did you ever see Takakesho complain about the negativity? I didn't. Was he in any scandals? No. Did he give any interviews? Barely. So he just came in and did his job every day and he worked hard and you couldn't ask for anything better from an Ozeki. Well, I think Toya Noshima was an Oshi guy as well, but developed seizures and epilepsy, and that was the reason he became more of a Yotsu guy that avoided going in head first. I might be wrong, though. Well, going in head first, as we can see, is extremely dangerous. Anyone know if Takanohana will take a snip at the hair cutting ceremony next year? Most likely, likely, I hope Takanohana makes an appearance. Maybe, maybe not. Takanohana, if you look at the Chris Sumo video, he said something in the interview when they talked about Takikesho or it was before he left that he had vowed not to see Takikesho ever again. So I don't know. There might be this whole feeling of I abandoned that world and I left Takikesho and now I can never appear again. But who knows? I don't know the background. I don't know where his head's at. So we'll see. I don't know. So I have a couple other comments that were in this translation from other people that I thought were interesting. And we have more videos. We have the short, but we also have some fun videos just to have a good time with Taka Keisho. Um, Let's see. There's a couple of comments. Okay, so his father, they had talked to his father somewhere. This is in the translation that I have. I have to assume this is accurate. If it's not, I apologize. But this was really shocking to me. His father, who pushed his son to be hard, pushed his son hard to be the best ricochet he could be, praised. As a parent, I think he did a great job. Though I had hoped he would quit earlier. The neck injury is said to have started when he was in Makushta. He was paralyzed on the left side of his body, which could have left him in a wheelchair or bedridden. I wanted to see him as Yokozuna, even for just one basho, but even that didn't happen. He did a great job. Though he didn't hit hard at the start, I'm proud he rose to Ozeki and served 30 basho. As a parent, I feel very relieved now. That is not what I expected to hear because I had heard that his father was real hard on him and this was their dream. And Taki Keisho even said earlier in the interview, this was our dream. Um, so yeah, that would make sense that the injury actually happened a long time ago and was extremely dangerous. And as a parent, suddenly you don't care about that dream anymore. It's like, please survive. So I do think Taki Keisha was taking an extreme risk continuing to fight. And it's really a good thing that he retired when he did. 
His dad's relieved. I'm sure his wife is relieved. I'm sure his son would like a father, <laughs> you know. So, yeah. But um, I'm going to look at your comments real quick, but I want to read this Japan Times article from a couple years ago that I found very interesting. It's, it's kind of in the vein of what we were just talking about with his dad. Michael says, it still baffles me how a four-time Yusho winner who spent 30 tournaments at the rank of Ozeki and made three separate rope runs, although unsuccessful, could receive so much hate. It's nonsensical to me. Oh, you're preaching to the choir, Michael. I've been battling on the internet about this for years. And it really, really upsets me. You're either not a nice person. You're very short-sighted. Guaranteed, most people who make those comments have never fought a day in their life. Or had had done anything with chronic pain. I mean, to me, Take Keisho embodies this spirit that any of us could hope to be that tough. I don't know how he did it. And it's just it's just insane. It's just people who say that stuff. That's why I call them haters. I don't want to take the the tone of like, oh, hate's a bad word. But at the same time, it's like, how can you talk so much crap about someone you don't know who's been through so much? Unless you're a hater. This is what it is. I thought that comment was something like Takunohana was going to stay out of the picture for like 10 years, but the question was if this would be the thing to drag him out. Very possible, Mitch. Very possible. And I would hope that he would come out for this because Taka Keisho got into sumo because of Takunohana. The Taka in his name came from Takunohana's Taka. I mean, he should be there. He should be. Once Takakesho retires, doesn't he take a different name so technically he wouldn't see Takakesho again? Ah, that's a good point. That's a very good point. He could use that philosophy. Takunohana seems to be doing well on his Instagram. I gotta get on Instagram because that's where all the good sumo stuff is. It baffles me how a man so round could get so much hate. Luckily, his round shape makes the hate slide right off. <laughs> I like it. Nah, it's because Takakesho beats their favorite wrestler so he sucks. It's probably that simple, JJ. But you know, I get emotional. I get emotional because I really, really like Taki Keisho. I do agree, JJ. People bag on those who beat their favorite. Imagine hating a guy who was given a body that wasn't compatible with sumo, developed a style to be successful, overcame injuries, survived a stable transfer against all odds, pushed for Yokozuna. Yeah, we're going to read an article about when he was denied Yokozuna. This is a very good article in a second. He is the definition of hard work. People hate Taki Keisho because he beat their favorite wrestler and didn't make Zuna. Yes. So when we talk about the Ozeki spirit, this, he's, he's like the living embodiment of the Ozeki spirit. He's the embodiment of the hard work concept that you see all over the place in, you know, Japanese philosophy. So if you hate on him, well, maybe you just got issues. <laughs> no, the hate just goes over his head because he's so short. I like it. So now I'm going to read something from the Japan Times. This was a John Gunning article. Usually John Gunning is the one I end up reading. This was in 2000. They uh, have been promoted to Yokozuna and they said his sumo was not good enough. So we're going to read what happened there. And coincidentally enough, that's what the Takeo Show short is about. So we're going to watch the short after I read this article. You guys can handle watching my video for 59 seconds. Okay. So Sumo's wait for its 74th Yokozuna goes on. Despite taking home the Emperor's Cup in the January meet, there will be no white rope in the immediate future for Ozeki Takekesho, as the Yokozuna Deliberation Council on Tuesday decided against recommending him for promotion to Sumo's highest rank. Using the English phrase high level several times to describe the kind of championship that Takakesho failed to earn, Yokozuna Deliberation Council Chairman Masashi Hiko Komura told reporters that although one committee member had informally raised the idea of promotion when chatting before the meeting, there wasn't any sentiment in that direction generally, so it wasn't discussed officially. The move was an unsurprising one, with many commentators and fans expressing the view that consecutive losses to Komusubi-ranked opponents on day 11 and 12 in the Hatsu Basho had scuttled Takekesho's hopes of becoming grand champion before March. 
Against a field which contained no other Ozeki or Yokozuna, the 26-year-old failed to dominate in a manner which have made promotion impossible to deny. Takekeshu himself seemed to anticipate the outcome of the Yokozuna Deliberation Council's deliberations when speaking to reporters the morning after his title win. The Ozeki, who admittedly is rarely, if ever, exuberant, didn't have the air of a man that had just won a championship during his 28-minute video call with Sumo's press club. Injury and a sense of missed opportunity may have been weighing on the mind of the veteran, who preferred to talk about the future and was impatient and testy with one journalist who raised the topic of his history before turning professional with certain opponents. The Yokozuna Deliberations Council's decision was widely anticipated, and it's hard to argue against it being the right one. Had Takakesho been made grand champion on the back of two straight 12-3 and three records, with just one being a championship, it would have been the softest promotion since either Futahagoro in 1986 or Tamano Umi in 1970. The oft-cited criteria for promotion to Yokozuna is consecutive Yusho, or Yusho equivalent at the rank of Ozeki. Takakesho's playoff loss in November and title win in January technically qualified him for promotion based on that standard. But, as with many aspects of sumo, such things are essentially, essentially precedent and tradition-based rather than strictly codified or hard and fast rules. The low number of wins, lack of top-tier opposition, and failure to stamp his authority on lower-ranked men all counted against Takekesho this time around. All hope is not lost for Toki Wayama's stable man, however, and the Yokozuna Deliberation Council did present a glimmer of light by calling him the closest wrestler currently to the rank of Yokozuna. While that may seem self-evident, given that Taki Keisha was the only extant Ozeki in the sport, and will be so again in March, reading between the lines, the statement could be taken as a hint that another title win in Osaka, even if it's once again a relatively weak 12-3 and outing, would be good enough to earn promotion recommendation. Of course, while being elevated to Sumo's highest rank comes with unparalleled prestige and glory, it also brings a pressure unique in the sport. In addition to being the living representative of a 2,000-year-old sport whose ideals and existence are often associated with those of the Japanese nation itself, there is no art margin for error at the top of sumo. Takekesho has lifted the Emperor's Cup on three occasions, but each time there's been a gap of at least two years between championships. 24 months without a title isn't acceptable for anyone wearing the white rope. The last Yokozuna to go full two calendar years between championships was Takanohana, between 1998 and 2000. Despite the first of those wins bringing him his 20th Emperor's Cup, not to mention the fact that Takonohana was sumo royalty. Calls to retire were both loud and cons constant. 2023 marks Takikeisho's ninth year in professional sumo, but the veteran is still only 26 years of age and entering what are considered to be the prime years for a rikishi. Promotion to Yokozuna for a pusher thruster with his track record and injury history would almost certainly shorten his career by several years and rob his fans of the chance to see him more, win more championships. So that part of the article is like, well, I think I would have taken the Yokozuna. He actually would have had a longer career if they had given him Yokozuna there because he would have had the opportunity to rest and he did qualify. It was a soft promotion, but he did qualify. But like Ozeki, they forced him to go another tournament to get Ozeki. So the point is, is that Takikesho had to fight for every inch and he was not given anything. He was not given anything. He can leave his career knowing that he did everything he possibly could and he got no freebies. So if you want to talk about the Hanka, okay, look, he's lost in playoffs before. He lost to Tokushoryu in a playoff. That cost him possibly a Yokozuna opportunity right there. He had one last shot at Yokozuna and he took it. And it's just unacceptable to hate him over that, in my personal opinion. But I have a current John Gunning interview where he, it kind of fits with this one, but we'll get to that after. I'm going to read all your comments, then we're going to watch the short, because the short shows that title opportunity, that Yokozuna failed opportunity. 
Okay. John Gunning is a legend, but he posts on Twitter like a 14-year-old girl on MySpace, and it really alters my perspective of him. <laughs> eh, Twitter does that to people. I don't know if the question about if he had regrets. Most of the time, the answer is no. If Taki Keisho answered like that, I'm going to make a declaration of bull cookies. The regret is losing to Abby in 11-2022, and probably losing to Tokushoryu. He had a couple of losses that, you know, if those went the other way, he would have been Yokozuna. And if he could have been Yokozuna, he could have taken six months off like Terano Fuji does. And it's funny because everybody talks about Terano Fuji, you know, or everybody talks about like, oh, the Japanese would be treated differently. Terano Fuji is a Mongolian. Taki Keisho was the only Japanese Yokozuna, uh, after Kisuno Sato was in and out, Taki Keisho was the Japanese Yokozuna hope, but they didn't give it to him. Taki Keisho got no freebies, man. He literally put his guts out in the line, and that was it. I like John Gunning's Twitter where he has old sumo photos. I gotta, I guess I gotta just get on Twitter and Instagram and all these places so I can get photos. I still think Keisho lost to Abi to prevent making a very obviously concussed Takayasu from fighting again. That was rough. That whole three-way playoff was rough. I'm torn on Keisho's 11-4 being considered part of a rope run. It feels like the Yokozuna Liberation Council was trying to make it up to him out of pity that they hadn't promoted him the last time he won a Yusho. Yeah, that 11-4 was still a Yusho equivalent, though. I mean, there's the rules and then there's the rules, but it doesn't really matter because they didn't give it to him anyway. It was there, and they were like, nope. Just like with Ozeki, he made 33, and they were like, ah, we, didn't, we still don't trust him. Got to do another tournament. I don't buy that. Not in a playoff for a Yusho, especially as an Ozeki whose literal job description is to be a champion. I don't know. Masashi Maru admitted to going easy on Takonohana in their playoff when he was an Ozeki because Taka was injured, then got chewed out by his coach. Uh, I kind of, I get it. Like, you should always give your best, but if you're trying to be good to the guy who's injured, I mean, it's kind of noble. I don't mind the 11-4 and four being considered since it was a Yusho. The second Yusho would have been enough. Back-to-back -back Yusho has been a guaranteed promotion since the 50s. Whoops, sorry we didn't promote you on 12-13 or 12-12. Yeah, you want 11, but even if you only get 12 in the next Yusho, you'll be Yokozuna promotion off of 23-2. and two. Come on, he got 25-2 and two in 2020. Just the mere fact that he was the only Ozeki and there were no Yokozuna fighting over and over and over again, getting more and more injured without the ability to sit out like all the Yokozuna could, I think they should have given it to him. Just, you know, I think he earned it, but they didn't. So people can yell all day long and guess what? Now his career is over. It's done. That's the worst part in that article for me is... No, it's good he didn't make Yokozuna because his career would have been shortened. No, his career would have been lengthened. Anyway. Goose, I've noticed a wave of Gen X folk having posts like that. I guess they're just at that point of internet maturity. <laughs> yes, I would agree with that, Daniel. And damn it, Musashi Maru damn well should have been chewed out for going soft in a playoff. To me, it's one thing if it's Jurio, but damn it, you're an Ozeki in a playoff to win the Yusho. One job. I agree, Mitch. Eh? I'm not going to argue with you guys about that. I mean, I'm always I'm always giving guys a hard time for not going hard enough to my liking. Only Ozeki, Absent Yokozuna, and Yusho all in January 2023. Certified bra moment. With that, guys, we got to watch the short. I'm telling you. I think it encompasses everything we're talking about in only 59 seconds. The music might be loud. I have no idea. So... Get, if you're wearing headphones or whatever, just prepare yourself. We're going to watch the short. I'm so excited. It's actually in our channel now. I just have to make it public. Okay. What happens if I set as an instant premiere? What happens then? Uh-oh. I don't know if I did something. Hmm. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Hold on. Let's not do that. Let's just make it public. Because I don't know what will happen. Okay. It's public. We're going to play it.
gotta find yes, let's refresh where is it oh maybe it's playing I don't know hold on where is it okay guys yeah where is it here it is okay let me see if you guys are commenting I don't know if I screwed something up Hey, GR Sumo, you're just in time for the short. Okay, I'm ready to play. Are you guys ready? It's only 59 seconds, so it's going to go by quick. Okay, hold on. All right, here we go. That was short. <laughs> oh boy, okay. Okay, yeah. Something Japanese is playing now. Okay. Okay, I played the short. Okay, that short will be available now on the website. Hopefully no one takes it down. Um, it got a copyright on it for the song, but it says that... Uh, it says that uh, Yuki Hayashi allows you to use his music, so we should be okay. Anyway, let's get back to the comments, and also let me just explain. So that part at the end of the video where he's throwing Koto Shoho... Yeah, the, man, what a moment that was. First of all, can I say, I didn't speed up any of those matches. Okay, that's how quick Takakesha's matches are. I That was like the, the regular normal speed, each one of those matches. I'm like, man, dude, I'm going to miss that. I am totally going to miss that. But that is the Koto Shoho, Yokozuna, you know, wasn't good enough situation. And you can see at the end of that. So it's funny because, um, you know, whenever I think about Taki Keisho, I think about that injury and then everything that happened after it. Like, he still got two more Yusho after that. Um, so, you know, that at the end when he's holding the uh, envelopes, uh, envelopes up, you can see the look on his face of like at least I got the title but I didn't get what I was looking for there's a lot of emotion in that uh, that particular uh, championship and that was before his son was born so at least the last one he got um, his son got to be there and got to be a part of that before he had to retire so anyway hope you guys enjoyed that short it took me forever I couldn't even sleep at night because I was trying to picture where to put what clips at one time. And there will be a longer version of this video when the haircutting ceremony occurs because that song is much longer than that. And there's this sort of sweeping part in the middle. So if it doesn't get taken down, haircutting ceremony is going in there and it's going to be a way more full. Um, there'll be more matches in it and stuff. I had to cut the... I was trying to make a short, which didn't work out, but... I had to cut quite a bit of the song to fit it in 59 seconds. So there will be a longer version, a longer Takikesho tribute. This is just to hold you over until whenever the haircutting ceremony is. So let's go back to the comments. 
You have to show the short as a channel intro before all your videos now. <laughs> I would love to do that. I'm just way too afraid that YouTube will like take down our channel or something. Even though it says Yuki Hayashi says you can use his music. But that would be awesome, wouldn't it? If that was like the intro to our channel now. It's amazing. Hey guys, I just got back from Keiko. Can't wait to talk about the man, the myth, the legend, Takikisho. Oh, we got some more videos. We're talking about them. We're reading articles, but we also got videos. I got a super funny one that I want you guys to watch with me. And Monster, I did what you asked. I played the short quick. You guys can watch it after this if you want to, because I don't know if I accidentally over talked the end of it, because the live is really weird. Like it's it's delayed. So I might have talked over the end of it. I'm not sure. You show doesn't count because you are the highest ranked guy. Makes no sense to me because that's what Zunas do. Exactly, Goose. The you show doesn't count because Takakesha was the strongest one there. And it's not fair when the strongest guy wins. Well, you know, they made... Here's the thing for me. They made their choice and they made it against Takakesha. So when people look at his legacy going forward... Like I said, no one can say that he got any freebies. They gave him the absolute hardest path you could give a guy. And he just took it. He never complained. He kept the stoicism. He worked hard. He did what he was supposed to do. He did everything they asked. And that's on them. They don't want to give it to him. Fine. Fine. Um, you show doesn't count because you got the most wins. Why would you think that makes you the best? Well, hey, Nishino Seki says 12 and 3 doesn't count, so. Damn, I still love that Skui Nagi he put on Koto Shoho. Ugh, that moment. Hits my heart. Here, Maria, I'll use the little heart for you. I saw all the hearts, guys. I appreciate that. Everyone say thank you to Yuki Hayashi. Thank you, Yuki Hayashi. Goose and others are talking about the debate. How about Gab? Keisho, my heart. If I could sacrifice sleep for Keisho. I sacrificed about three nights for that video. Was great 42. I'm sure he would like it too. Thank you, Easy Macro. You're good. No over talking any of the videos on the stream. Oh, good. Good, because it's been very confusing to me looking at this comment screen and looking at my video screen and it's looking like they're on two different times, but maybe they're not. Maybe it's actually the playback in the YouTube studio is off, but not what you guys are seeing there. Yes, this would be a JD. But I think Trump was live, was going to be live commenting on it or something. I heard that. I don't know if that's true or just a rumor, but anyway, guys, we have more K show stuff, more K show stuff. I don't know if it's a good time since you're all involved in the debate, but we'll wait a moment. I really hope everybody watches that Takakisha video. And not because I made it and I think I'm great. Because I feel like it really captures the heart of Takakisha and I want it for Takakisha's sake. Would rather be a sleep deprived Keisho fan than get regular sleep and be something like a may safe fan. <laughs> Yuck. Speaking of which, I'll read one more quick thing from the translation and then we'll do some more stuff. Here were some comments from people. Takakesho's retirement has also been felt on the ring as well. Though Abi sank to 10 losses after succumbing to Koto Zakura today, he took some time to praise the Exozeki, saying, He was the top rikishi of our generation. He showed me the importance of forward momentum and pressure. I thank him for leading me. And that, my friends, is why Abi. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm always going to like Abi. I already did. But that statement right there when no one else is talking about Takakesho right now. I love that, Abby. Put him right at the top of the popularity poll. When Takakesho's out, I'm going to be voting Abby second. His attendance, Waka no Show and Takakento, who has struck, stuck with him since the chaos which engulfed Takanohana Bea, had also good things to say about him. The former recalled, he is a very stoic person. Even away from the dohyo, he is always thinking about sumo. I want to emulate his style of fighting. Meanwhile, the latter praised, I learned a lot from him. He is a wonderful human being. I remember us waking up at 3.30 a.m. to practice together when we first started out. That sounds like something Keisha would do. So, we've got some more videos and stuff if you guys are up for it. 
And I have an article. I might have to. Give me a moment. So let's see. What do we got here? Okay, that was the press conference. This this is what it looks like if you put Takakesho's kanji in here. You will get a bunch of his matches. You will get him with this crazy stuffed animal, which might be funny. Maybe I'll click on that and see what it is. Yeah, let's let's click on it for fun. Let's see what it is. Okay. Okay, he was selling the official store. Great. This is the video you were talking about in the comments earlier where this is a nice little tribute to Keisho, including showing him when he was younger with the short hair, which I really appreciated. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of matches in here. This right here I had put up. This is his Ozeki promotion. This we're going to watch because this is hilarious. I'll get to it in one second because I want to do the, um, the other article and it's on my phone. So give me one second. I'll be right back. Okay, this was John Gunning's most recent article. So let's read it. And then I'll read your comments again, and then we'll watch a fun video. Ono Sato's promotion to Ozeki was confirmed Wednesday morning as Sumo's newest superstar continues to reap the rewards of yet another incredible tournament. With the 24-year-old's meteoric rise progressing unabated, Ono Sato figures to dominate headlines inside and outside of the ring for the foreseeable future. But while the two-time Emperor's Cup winner may be the main story in Japan's national sport right now, he is far from the only one. As Ono Sato increasingly hogs the spotlight, a number of significant former luminaries have called time in their careers. <clears throat> Just 12 months ago, Takekisho claimed his fourth top division title, the second most for anyone ranked at Ozeki in modern sumo history. But lingering injury issues forced the burly pusher thruster to hang up his mawashi shortly after his 28th birthday. Takekisho's top division career may have lasted just six and a half years, but the Hyogo Prefecture native was must-watch TV for virtually all of that span. With explosive power out of the initial charge, but limited abilities in defense, particularly on the Mawashi. Few of Takekesho's bouts became long, drawn-out stalemates. The Ozeki had to win quickly or risk finding himself in a difficult position. That led to fast starts and dramatic finishes, with Takekesho's matchups thrilling audiences no matter the outcome. In addition to routinely producing exciting sumo, the fact that Takekesho won as much as he did in so few basho, and with a body atypical of elite modern wrestlers, deserves special mention. Kaio, with five Emperor's Cups, is the only Ozeki to have lifted more silverware than Takekisho, and that was over a career twice as long. If not for injury at inopportune moments, Takekisho may have gone even further. The white rope of Yokozuna was within touching distance on more than one occasion. Had Takekisho not lost a title playoff to Abi in November 2022, it's conceivable that he would have been promoted following his victory in the next meet. Given how things transpired after that, with just one more championship and six withdrawals in ten tournaments, it's arguable Takekisho's legacy actually benefits from missing out. While there is no denying being part of Sumo's most exclusive club is an unparalleled honor, Takekisho retires as one of the best Ozeki in history, rather than a short-term Yokozuna who underperformed at the rank. Of course, that's taking the finding of silver linings to the nth degree, and there's no question that given a choice, Takakisha would rather have reached the rank of Yokozuna. I think we were all kind of there. So that's John Gunning's most uh, updated speak on that topic. I read your comments and then I want to watch the Sumo Grip video because it really shows these guys' personalities. Okay. 
Taiga Kento has the longest, thickest legs I've ever seen. He's doing well coming back from a knee injury. Well, now he'll have Takakesho's support in a different way. 330. Why does Abi being a suck-up for popularity votes not surprise me? <laughs> Abi's a character, man. Abi with no hankas and only pushing is truly what Takakesha would have wanted him to do to keep his legend alive. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna be rooting for Abi to keep it going. I mean he's a pusher thruster. He won't be as powerful as Keisho, but I don't know. He can still make a difference with things. I'm actually surprised that there's not more chat from you guys. Usually you're going nuts, but hopefully you're still here. Is everybody still here? Because I'm about to do the sumo grip video. And if you're not watching now, you can watch it later. So I'm going to the middle of the video because this is where Takakesho pops up. And Takakesho and the following uh, two guys make this video like a classic video. So we're going to watch it. Pop up. Watch that. Hey, <laughs> see Okay, so really quickly, the on Sumo Prime Time they did this with a translation. So I should probably go to that one. Ah yeah, I gotta go to that one. See if I can do it because Because it is hilarious what they say. Hopefully that comes up. There it is. Okay. We've got to watch it in with the subtitles. I'm going to go to... Ah. <laughs> oh, is this the same one? Let me see. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll go back. We'll go back. We should might as well go to Hakuho. Okay. We start with Hakuho. This so fits their personalities. Hakuho. <laughs> ジョコです。結構もっと出る。いや、もうもうちょっと稽古したら出た。はい。左やってみ。左です。お願いします。これ上だな、こう。回しとる感じ。よっ。すごい。88です。88 ありがとうございます。ちょっとあの、ファンの皆さんに一言いただいていいですか。え、初場所、あ、精一杯頑張りますし、まあ、怪我の方もだいぶ良くなったんで、え、楽しみにしてください。え、いつも取るように一生懸
七十です。七<笑>十でした。七十でした。はい、ありがとうございました。<笑>じゃあちょっとあのファンの皆さんにメッセージいただけますか。えー、っと前場所応援ありがとうございます。えー、来年も、えー、一生懸命いい相撲を取ろうと思います。応援よろしくお願いします。高木翔平でした。ありがとうございました。ありがとうございます。じゃ、正体付きお願いします。はい。お願いします。得意な方でお願いします。左手ですか。左手。はい。まあ、ショットで左手。さあ、お願いします。おお。<笑>ええー、測定不能です。百超えました。えぐ、強。初めて行きました。九十一が最高だったんですか。一位,位です。一位です。あ、なんかこの力の強さの源は何なんですか。いや、馬刺しです。馬刺し。熊本の方に出させたら、たくさん視聴者の方いらっしゃいますんで、ファンの方に一言お願いします。あの十一月場所は休場してしまったんですけど、一月場所まで、えー、怪我を治して。また活躍できるように頑張ります。応援よろしくお願いします。ありがとうございます。正太関でした。<笑>はい、飛び猿関に来ていただきました。はい、はい。自信あります。負けないと思います。負けないです。はい、じゃあ、自信ある。自信ある。はい、じゃあ、こちら。前見そうかもね。おお、そうですね。よし。はい。うん、多分やばいですこれ。おお。お。お。一周と六十で考えた。だから百、百。だから、え、一周で二百だから。二百、二百六十二です。はい、というわけで,ううで、ねね、最下位ということで。そうですね。はい。あ、でも、こうやって見たら、でも、握力じゃないんだなっていう。握力じゃない。相撲だから。相撲で、そうですね。六十で最下位ですか。スピードですからね、相撲は。<笑>そう、まあ、ちなみに、正代関ですね、大関は。もう百超えてました。え。でも、僕は。だ、一周回って、六十二だから。<笑>じゃ、二百六十。二百六十二。はい、知事で。えー、相撲は握力じゃないということが分かったんで。えー、動きで。勝っていきたいと思います。皆さん応援してくれると嬉しいです。よろしくお願いします。Okay, so first of all, have a good night, JJ. Thank you for joining us. I have to say, I left that last put up for Mitch, so I really hope Mitch catches that because <laughs> this video cracks me up because it really, really shows their personalities are exactly as we have made. <laughs> well, the best part, Mitch was also Toby Zaro saying. I'm going to get the record. You know, just acting like ridiculous. Just that was such a Toby Zara thing. I don't know how you can hate him. He's hilarious. He's absolutely <laughs> hilarious. And Shodai, Shodai winning the whole thing and not understanding why was the most Shodai thing I've ever seen. And what I liked about it for t this purpose of Taki Keisho is to show you, like, outside of the ring, Taki Keisho is probably like a blast to hang out with. Laughing, smiling, not taking himself too seriously. That's why Daisho and him are like playing video games and watching anime before he became Ozeki. Um, so let's do the comments. Sumo grip video. Yes, they're these were fascinating. Um, playing the squeezy thing. I'm just EP. He looks the same in the video as he does now. Yeah, Taki Keisho is gonna look young for a long time. So I'm glad you guys are still here. GR Sumo is watching the videos. I think Shodai won. Yep, Shodai was the strongest. There was a grip strength video where Ura scored better than Hoshiryu. Yes, I haven't watched that one yet, but I didn't think Takakesha was in it, so I didn't pull it up for tonight. But maybe future live streams, if this goes well, we can watch other funny sumo things and react. I would love to have seen Tochinoshin try this with how strong his outside left grip was. Ah, yeah, it would have been cool to see Tochinoshin do it. And there was a little bit of cockadoo for quackadoo. Such a different time period that video was. All these guys. His hands are so small. Hamster hands. Shodai. Are they all left-handed? Keisho is left-handed. <laughs> so sure you. <laughs> Why aren't you eating raw horse meat too, nephew? Did you see Asha Shoryu's tweet that the era of Mongolian dominance was over? Straight up mean. <laughs> Asha Shoryu's a nut. Remember, he got kicked out of sumo. So, you know. 
Mitch celebrating Toby Zaro being the weakest. Toby Zaro's facial expressions are everything. Mongolian dominance, maybe. Mongolian do very wellness? Nah. There are a lot of good Mongolians still, like that Terno Fuji guy. He's pretty good. Not gonna not gonna lie, the sound he made during this squeeze makes me think he's constipated again. <laughs> Will you stop it, Mitch? Did you see that picture of little Keisho and Daisho? Adorable. No, where is it? Where is this picture? I must seek it out. I must seek out the picture. All right. Let's see what other videos we got. That sumo grip one was pretty fun. Uh, let's see. That was our Keisho video. That was our picture. Uh, this is just, if you search Taki Keisho, this was the Tochi Noshin match. So let's watch that. And this is his Ozeki promotion, which I don't have a translation for. So we're just going to watch it.関係え、高級ま、ま、like I said, pausing just for the sake of not having issues, we're doing it like reaction style. We should be within our fair use standards. And these are free videos available on the Sumo Kyokai website. You can go there if you'd like to watch them. Let's see. That's Tokiwayama. Let's go back to Takakesho, even though we don't know what he's saying. 
いや今まで通り自分が挑んでいくっていう気持ちを忘れなければ関係ないと思ってますはいなったから自分がこう受けるという気持ちを持たず自分も向かっていく気持ちをまあそういう相撲スタイルでもあるしまあそういう気持ちを忘れたら、えー、ダメになっちゃうと思います自分ではでこれからも挑んでいくっていうまだ上の番付もありますし何も守る必要はないなっていうのは思ってます、えー、次の番付を目指します、はい、もうそういうもうそのことを言ったらもうそこで終わっちゃうので、えー、どんな大関ではなくもう一つ上があるわけですから、えー、上を目指して立ち向かっていきたいというのを思ってます。はい<笑><笑>新大関の高木翔です。突き押し相撲一生懸命頑張って、来場所も頑張ります。応援よろしくお願いします。And there you have it. I think, since we're having such a good time, we should watch this one here because there's some good match footage in this.、Uh, This、um, tribute that the Sumo Kyokai did. So we're going to watch this too. Why not? Let's read some comments. Then we're going to watch Taki k e i s h o with short hair. Let's see. Shodai's grip would help if he grabs the belt. <laughs> Shodai usually gets knocked back so far he can't grab the belt lately. Practically just walked right through one of the physically strongest ricochet of this era. Think about this for a second, Michael. He's pushed out t e r u n o f u j i He's pushed out Tochi Noshin. I mean, those are two of the biggest guys there is. And they couldn't handle Taki k e i s h o s full thrusts when he's healthy. So for people who are like, oh, his sumo's boring, it's so limited, you don't know what you're talking about, okay? If you're that powerful to take down those guys, it's Pretty entertaining. Yeah, the cameras just click, 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 click. That's probably why they get such good pictures. Hamster. It's weird to see his stable master not smiling. He usually looks so happy. I thought Takano Hana was Taki k e i s h o s stable master. GR Sumo, he was Taki k e i s h o s stable master、um, right up until right before he became Ozeki, and then it became Tokiwayama when Takano Hana. Stepped down and disappeared from sumo. Yeah, what a shame that was, honestly, that、um, Takano Hana didn't stick around long enough for the Ozeki thing. I keep talking about this, but Taki k e i s h o faced nothing but obstacles his entire career. First, he's too short. So he, and his arms are too short, so he's got to adjust to sumo to be quite dangerous. Gets the injury in Makushta. His stable becomes emb- embattled in this huge scandal. Takano Hana, who he's looked up to his entire life, his father's looked up to him his entire life. He named him, his original name, Takanobu. He was named after Takano Hana. He gets in his stable, and then Takano Hana steps down and just disappears from his life. And the cameras, the, pa- the paparazzi and stuff like that, and the tabloid guys, We're outside of his stable for like a good month. And here he was going on his Ozeki run. He goes for Ozeki and they say, Yeah, you got 33 wins, but not good enough. Give us another tournament. So he goes and gives him another tournament, becomes Ozeki, immediately gets injured. His knee gets injured right after that. Goes Kadoban. Decides, his, him and his coach decide, okay, we're going to sit out the second tournament. And even though you just became Ozeki, we're going to go to Ozeki Wake and take a chance that he can win 10, which he did. Which he did. And then he goes on a tear for five years and, you know, all the injury woes that we've seen and all the things we talked about earlier about missing out on Yokozuna, I'd say at least twice, maybe three times. And then basically injuring his neck so bad that he retires at 28. So he's had a very、um, 
up and down, difficult career. However, and I wanted to make this point earlier, and then we'll look at the tribute video, which is pretty good. He's had a better career than some. If you look at Tomokaze, he had such potential. And he gets injured and he's just gone. If you look at Asanoyama, Asanoyama was being pegged by everyone, including Hakuho, to be the next Yokozuna. And not only does he lose his Ozeki rank from not injury, um, while he's down in the lower depths, his father dies. And after that, his coach dies. And then he fights back from injury. And he finally gets in and he's about to touch Sanyaku again. And he gets injured again. And then he gets injured so bad that now he will drop down and have to fight all over again. And Asanoyama has only one title and he wasn't Ozeki at the time. So as hard as it is, as sad as it is, Takakesho made something great out of adversity. He really did. He made a sumo career that's, you know, he's one of the most successful Ozeki of all time, and he shouldn't even have been able to do it. And that neck injury, if it happened in Makushta, we're lucky we saw him at all. That means all of the fights we ever saw of Takikesho in the top division were bonus. He was fighting on borrowed time. And when you think about it that way and you see the careers of other guys that never even got a chance because of injury, it's been a great short career. It really has been. And I can see that he shouldn't have too many regrets. He did put it all on the line and he got no freebies, like I said. So, you know, now he gets to walk off and he's a sumo coach and... That's got to be really cool for his wife, whose father was an Ozeki and died young. And now Takakesha will use that dohyo and maybe make something great out of it, which would be great for his wife and his son. And, I mean, the whole second half of his life might be super cool. I just hope we get to hear about it. I need some translations. So let's read some comments because there's some comments. Contrary to popular belief, he has a winning record against E.G. Nojo. That I did know, but I still held my breath every time he fought him. I remember the old pics of Takunohana with the fanny pack. I, too, remember those. Takakesho slapping Hakuho, Kisunosato, and Kakuru down in the same tournament was crazy. Not only that, I think that was the only time he ever beat Hakuho. Every other time, Hakuho made him look silly, so that was pretty cool. Takunohana still rocks a fanny pack. <laughs> Once a fanny pack, always a fanny pack. Tomokaze, my heart. Oof. Yeah. Some people think that Takakesho wasn't promoted to Ozeki when he got 33, and he didn't get Yokozuna when he could have since his playoff loss in November and January Yusho because of Takunohana. I will say that at least in the very beginning, there was a lot of negativity thrown at Takakesho because of Takunohana. It's just how it is in Japan. It's like, what did your... Like, it's that old thing of, why are you cursed? Because your father cursed you. So why is Takakesho getting injured? Because he worked under Takanohana. Sort of a superstitious way of looking at things, but I do think there was some level of him getting backlash because of Takanohana. You've heard of bonus sumo? Now try bonus career. Yeah, I'd say his whole career is a bonus at this point. We may never have known Takakesho if he wasn't so tough and lucky. He's lucky that he didn't get way more hurt. I love the guys that the Sumo Association hates like Koshiryu and Takakesho. <laughs> he made Hakuho pull out of that basho, a rare feat to embarrass Hakuho that much. Well, you know, Hakuho made sure when Takakesho went on his first Yokozuna run, and I'm sure you can find it actually on the Sumo Kyokai, because this is where I first saw the practice sessions. He messed Takakesho up so bad in front of everybody. That that was the Hakuho way. I'm going to toughen you up. to pr You know, you want to be Yokozuna, you got to go through this. Takakesho was never the same after that balling. <laughs> so, you know, Keisho owed Hakuho one. Ah, if they just won the three-way playoff in 2022 November, he would have been Yokozuna. Yep. It's that close. 
So when people pull this nonsense of, he hankered a poor Mike Ashira wrestler. Okay, well, he lost in a 3A playoff and lost Yokozuna. He was on another opportunity to get Yokozuna with a timer on him. Knowing his career was not going to be very long. And he made a decision that he made the decision. And you know what? Now he at least has um, a U show that he was able to share with his son. If, if you looked at anybody else and knew their career was going to end 12 months after that U show, you would understand the Hanka a little bit more. Now, if he was in his prime and he was going to wrestle another five years, it's like, yeah, it's a little bit different. But I mean, it's not, it's, to me, it's the equivalent of a small guy hanking a huge guy. You know it's possible because there's a disadvantage. Takakesha was actually disadvantaged. And Atami Fuji had been hanked by somebody else in that tournament. So he should have been a little bit wise to the hanka. Um, it still sucks. I wish Takakesha didn't do it. And I wish Atami Fuji had... I actually wish just Atami Fuji had read it. And then Takakesha still won the match. But it is what it is. Hako was just unimpressed with Takakesha for some reason. But Hakuho believed in Asanoyama for some reason. Yeah, that was rough for me because, you know... I don't know how I felt about Hakuho. I mean, I acknowledge him as the greatest of all time. And it was fascinating to watch him fight. I loved it. It's an am- it just amazing. A che- like a sheer honor to have been able to watch Sumo while he was there. But the way he treated Takakesha really sucked. And the way that he praised Asanoyama made me like not like Asanoyama that much. But now Asanoyama ended up with the worst end of the deal. I think Hakuho has bad taste. In people. I don't think he's good at picking them. We'll see. That three-way playoff was my return to sumo. Turns out the winner would become my least favorite (laughs) Rikishi. As I was saying earlier, I don't know if you were here. I gotta like Abi because, man, internally he's a good guy. But he's all about the win. And personally, I don't believe in Asunayama. He's not versatile enough. Well, at this point, he is a hobbled mess. If he... If he comes back and becomes Ozeki again, he deserves, like, massive applause. He's been through a lot. I wish Atami Fuji just wouldn't have choked in the first place. That situation never happened. Takayasu was also in that Yusho picture. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. Like, you've got people who, you know, just, I, they love Atami Fuji, and I understand it, because he's, he's a lovable guy. He's cool. He's the next up and coming. But then that turns into a pure hatred because of what happened with Takakesho. And it's like, get out of here with that. Get out of here with that. Takakesho almost sacrificed his life for this sport. I don't want to hear this. Tommy Fuji's just starting his career and Takakesho's career is over. Stop it. Give me this nonsense. All right. Let's look at some of the tribute here because there's some good matches in there. And you get to see Takakesho with short hair. Yeah, Takayasu ended up, like, I think hitting his head on Abi's chin and going down. It was very scary. And here's Takayasu still chugging along. I haven't given up hope. Not yet that he'll get a U show. I'm not going to predict it, but I, I'm, I'm hoping it happens. All right. Let's see what we got here. Oh, no. We just watched that. So we're going go to go to some water. this. はじめに出身地所属部屋歴史名をご紹介いたします高野花部屋佐藤<笑><笑> Oh, 
意識しないようにしたんですけどやっぱりもうふと何ていうんですかね落ち着いたりとかそんななんかなんかしてる時はあれなんですけどやっぱなんかちょっと落ち着いたりとかするとやっぱりもう買ったら重量とか買ったらってやっぱ考えてしまってましたねやっぱ買ったらめちゃくちゃもう泣きそうなぐらい咳取るももうあれだし泣きそうなぐらい嬉しいんかなと思って。たんですけどまあ、やっぱ肩に降りたっていうかもうダメなんですけどちょっとほっとしたっていうかここなんか気が少し楽になったかなと思いますね。はいはいえー、じゃあ裏兵庫県出身高野花部屋支配並びに症状が8百人以上に利用されました。We're going to pause briefly, like I said, to keep the stream from going down. I'll read some of your comments, then we'll watch some more great fights. CK says, Wow, you weren't lying about no hair. <laughs> he had like nothing. I guess he did the shaved thing. I feel that if Atami Fuji really wanted to grind for that Yusho, he would have beat Asunayama. Atami Fuji will have many chances to win Yusho, but Taki Keisho didn't. Taki Keisho put him in his place. Yeah, I mean, the truth is, Atami Fuji. If he keeps himself healthy, he is at the beginning of his career. Taki Keisho was at the end. Taki Keisho knew that. A lot of people were in denial about it. I wasn't.、Um, Taki Keisho had a choice to make, right? His neck's all beat up. He's really not in the shape to fight anymore.、Um, I'll get to that in a second. Kali Wali, I do not hide the lives. What you have to do is.、Um, Just go into the live section. So instead of videos, click on the live tab and you'll see all the lives. I don't hide any of the lives, I keep them all public.、Um, anyway,、um, Taki Keisho had a choice to make. He knew that he was out of gas. He was going to have to go on a playoff. And this was his last chance to、uh, go for Yokozuna. And it was a chance for a Yu show. And his wife and his son were in the room. He made a choice. There was a lot riding on that choice. He probably would have rather have done what he's done in these earlier videos. I mean, look at how he knocked Tochi Noshin down. That, that threw me for a loop when I first saw it, too. It's like, wow, that's a huge guy. And he just knocked him down like he was cutting down a tree. He knocked Kisa no Sato right on his face. He was so powerful when he was healthy. Ugh. That part makes me sad that we don't get to see Aoyama and his massive assets anymore. He ends up retiring at the exact same time as Taki Keisho, fascinatingly enough.、Um, 
and taught him that he would have to work for that Yusho. And losing to Takakesho by a slap down just proves that Tommy Fuji didn't have the experience yet to win the Yusho. Yeah, I'm sure Tommy Fuji has learned something from it. Unfortunately, he hasn't been doing that well. I think if he just goes off and wins a Yusho, everything will be right in the world again. Also, you don't want your first Yusho to be an 11 of 4. You want it to be your best performance. Eh, I think you'd take a Yusho no matter what the record is. But I, I, I hear what you're saying. He might possibly have a better Yusho in the future. But he's got to stay healthy and he's got to win. Because nobody's career is guaranteed. We've seen this. Please make this into a video. The lives are always hidden after. Um, it's really hard, but um, we'll see. We'll see. I have so much trouble with YouTube. you know. But I'm telling you, at least for you, your benefit, just go into the live. The live tab and you'll be able to see this. And if you weren't here earlier, because it's, I think you said that you didn't get notifications, I played the Takike Show short. It's not actually short, it's in videos, and you can play that if you want. It's 59 seconds long, but it's excellent. Also, thank you for this live stream, it's very well done. Thank you, GR Sumo. I had to give Takike Show my best. I will always give Takike Show my best. Hoshiri has to earn my best, but I already like him. But I need him to show me some Takikesho spirit, man. He used to get it together. Takikesho was like, F it, we ball. <laughs> so when is John going to do an Aoyama tribute live stream? I don't know. I think he would probably do a tribute to Hokuto Fuji. I think Hokuto Fuji is his absolute favorite. Like, I have loved some guys who have retired. Um, Chiyo no Kuni, I loved. Oh, I loved him so much. Ishiura, I loved Ishiura. I didn't do live streams for them. Takikesho is like the, the cream of the crop. I think if Hokuto Fuji retires, you will see a live stream from John. So many retirements lately. Yep. You show us a lot of cash too. Yes. And so we can add that to Takikesho. Like he's got a new kid. Needs to bring the money home. You could screen record this stream and then upload it as a video. I could. There are things I can do. It just, it takes time. It takes time. All right. We're going to watch some more. We're going to see some more excellent Takikesho now. Once again, pausing for the sake of keeping the stream up. Um, we watched this on the Takikesho birthday stream. This was the one where Takikesho could have won the U show with a win against Terano Fuji here and then um, loses it. And now they have to do a playoff and they have to fight again. And I know that when I was watching this, it was like, man, 
how is Takakesho going to overcome? And then he does this. Alright, we're going to pause again. I'm going to read some comments. Okay. There's Takakento holding him up. You guys and your Bonzake. We're going to do the Guess the Bonzake stream in two weeks, by the way. October 15th. This Bonzake is actually way easier than people think. And you do have a drink. But still, there's a Bonzake of traps. A lot of choices are easier than they seem. We better be bringing that knowledge to the stream in a couple weeks. Habab Gob is going to check out the debate. Challenging part of the Bonzo K will be who makes Komasubi. If the, well, that is the question for this Bonzo K is who's making Komasubi. I agree for the most part. There are a couple spots that I keep waffling on. Komasubi 1 West and Maegashira 17. Well, those, those are typically the tricky ones. Do not fall for the trap. Forget Onosato, Hoshiryu, 74th Yokozuna, and Enho, 75th Yokozuna. Not Enho. The poor guy's toast. But it would be nice if he can continue in sumo, so he really needs to keep fighting just to get his elder stock. Kirishima is the 75th. Possible. Enho is washed, can't even you show. And I think Hiro Umi's placement is not as straightforward as it might seem. I agree. Hiro Umi, watch out. That's going to be a troublesome spot. You show fifth division. Oh, Enho, couldn't you show the fifth division? Well, he's got a busted neck. The last three spots are the true toss up. It's the one pure guess that will likely decide who wins the you show. Absolutely. Also, the bout where Takikesho blasted out Tochinoshin was everything because he actually put Tochinoshin in his place since whichever one won would get Ozeki. Yeah, that was a fascinating time because he took Tochinoshin's Ozeki spot, but then Tochinoshin won his 10 in the Ozeki Waki spot and got to go back to Ozeki. So it was like everything was right in the world. And then for a little bit of time, it was Takakesho, Tochi Noshin, and I think Goedo and Takayasu were still there. And then Goedo drops out. No, I think, I don't know if it was Goedo or Ta Tochi Noshin first. I think it was Goedo, then Tochi Noshin, then Takayasu. And then it was just Takakesho for a long time. And then Shodai and Takiyumi come up with Asanoyama. And then they all fall. And Takikesho's by himself again. And then we finally, in the last part of Takikesho's career, get Koto Zakura and Hoshiryu and Kirishima. I mean, even Kirishima couldn't last as long as Takikesho. <laughs> Hiroumi could land at Magashira too because it would be the correct emotion factoring in the shrinking Sanyaku. Or they could be a couple of drinks in and do whatever they want. 7-7 seven, seven, Karaban Ozeki Tochi Noshin versus 9-5 and five, just demoted Ozeki Wake Takakesho. Yeah, that would be a battle. True, I could see a case for 4 through 6 exchanges. I think I've settled on 5 but haven't sold myself. On the Komusubi, I am strongly thinking Waka Takakage. I hope they do that. That is one of the biggest traps, I agree. I really hope we have a Waka Bro Komusubi. They could have been Sekiwaki together if Wakataka didn't get hurt. Yeah, they were 
They were so close. The thing is, is if Wakataka Kage is Komusubi, then Magashira 1 and 2 would be different than if Shodai Oho, Oho became Komusubi. Mitch doesn't think it'll happen. I, I think Mitch might be right. Probably be a second time brothers would occupy the same Sunyaku rank since Takawaka Bros. If you get Komusubi wrong, that's a huge problem. Mm-hmm. Yes, Keisho was the constant. Onosato will be in his Ozeki debut, which is always a disaster. And also coming off of Yusho, I think Onosato will get another 9-6 and six or something like that. I see Hoshiryu getting the November Yusho. Hoshiryu's got to step it up, though. At this point, he's had so many... Now, I say that considering that he is one of the most consistent Ozeki we've had in the last 7 or 8 years. I still say, like, if he wants Yokozuna, he's got to step it up. I think I'm settling on Shodai, but could be convinced to take Oho, but I've mostly DQ'd Wakataka Kage. Nabitame's back in Jurio, with Takikesha retiring, and neither pusher, thrust, or secretary to fill the void in my heart. That void's gonna be there forever. I so miss the Tochi Noshin Sky Crane move. Tochi Noshin was so good. I loved Tochi Noshin. Oh, man. That was hard that Takikesha had to fight him for the spot. I should save the explanation for the Bonzake stream. Yes, you should. Who is GR and why does he type well at a full sprint? Because that's what GR does, Goose. Hoshiryu's best record ever in September is an 8-7. and seven. Hoshiryu hates September but always comes back in November with a strong double-digit record. Hoshiryu has an 8-7 and seven for the last couple of hockey tournaments. Weird, I guess he doesn't like pumpkin spice latte and scented candles. It's still pretty hot in September. Maybe... He's one of those guys that doesn't like the heat. All right. I'm going to try to finish off this Takikesho video, and that will be the end of the stream. So be prepared.切磋琢磨するオーズモをご覧いただける者と存じます。今年賞法千葉県出身佐渡ヶ嶽部屋加賀慶賞兵庫県出身時場山部屋今場所最後の一番であります。今週から初めての優勝だったので自分の義理の父親の北天遊席の優勝回数を超えられたのですごい嬉しいです万歳万歳万歳 
なるほどだけ夢見て頑張ってきたんですけど、えー、横綱を目指す体力と気力がなくなったので引退しました。うん、まあ怪我あっての自分なので怪我をも合わせた自分の実力なのでそこで力を出せなかったということはもう終わりだなと思いました、えー、大関になってから特に怪我が多くて、えー、もうまあこの満身創痍の中ねやっぱり一生懸命やったんでまあまあ、もう月並みな言葉ですけども,もうご苦労様ってこう言ったわけですねまあ全て印象に残ってるんですけど、まあ、特に印象に残って、えー、本当にやるかやられるかの勝負だったので、まあ、前の日に自分の人生が決まるなと思って挑んだ一番でしたあれで勝って2桁の白星を当てて大関をつかんだわけですが。そうですね、まあ、自分との戦いが栃ノ心関とやる前にあったんですけど、まあ、それに打ち勝てたということが、まあ、今でも自分の誇,誇りです、まあ、横綱になれなかったので横綱の景色を見たかったというのは。あるんですが、まあ、それに対して横綱に向かっていく上での自分のやってきたことはやるべきことはすべてやったと思っているので、まあ、届かなかったとっいうところです。自分が少し精神的ににマイナスになったりとかそういう時にファンの声援とか、えー、タオルとかをこう掲げてくれると本当に心からありがたいなと思ったし本場所に向けて 100% の力を出しに行くんですけどファンの皆様のおかげで 120% そこまで引き上げていただいたなと思ってます。大関のこの土俵人生、さら貫いてきた信念というのは、何でしょうか、まあ、勝って怒らず、負けて腐らず、それだけやってきましたどうですか、10年間、土俵人生、悔いはないですか全くないです、もう。I'm pausing once again, just for this. I am not going to comment on this.、Uh... Guess the Bonzake stuff since we'll be doing it in two weeks. So you guys can talk to each other about it. I'm only going to read Take Keisho comments. Keisho Skui Nagade Koto Sho Home Bank to Jurio. Luckily, he figured it out in his back. That was still one of the sweetest things that Take Keisho did in recent memory. Hoshuryu is younger than most of the top division. This is true. But watch out for Oho. Holy crap, k i t i s h i m a is older than I thought. Wakatake Koge is older than I thought, too. Hoshiryu is only 25, while Koto Zakura will be 27. Hoshiryu got more time than k i t i s h i m a being 28, and Koto Zakura being 27. And yes, he is the classiest hamster. I'm glad I don't live in California because、um, it's nice and like 70 degrees high here in New York. Nice and cold the way I like it. Let's see. Take Keisho, a man of few but very honest words. If he loses, he won't make up excuses. He will just say he was weak that day. That's the beautiful thing about Take Keisho. So we're going to let him play this out. Because, like I said, I'm not reading all the Guess the Bonzake stuff. We're going to be talking about this in just a little while. More to get out of there. 素晴らしい相撲人生を励ましていただきました。
And that was that. I will put Takikesho for Yokozuna and my guest, the Bonzake Solidarity. Not the music. I'm not crying. You're crying. After Basho, that absolutely deserves devotion. I will tell you, the full Takikesho tribute that I have planned is going to be... If you thought the short was good, just wait till you see the full tribute. It's going to take me months. I'm very, very meticulous when I'm making an actual video. Um, the short was just like, I got to get something quick for the live stream and we need a, our first short. And like I said, that didn't work out at all. Um, but the short was a preview of things to come. I am very good at making music video tributes as long as they don't get taken down. Takakesho taken too soon. Gone but not forgotten. It's like the credits of Pikmin type music. It's Takeshover. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they put him in the favor of Hakuoho. Ah! Bonzake talk. That's between you, gentlemen, not me. Well, there's not much more to say about Takakesho. We've watched a lot of the good matches. There's some bloody ones. I might put those in some of the uh, tribute videos. Ones with Daisho, Hokuto Fuji, and Meisei. Those are always the bloodiest. Oh, and Yoshikaze. He had some really good rivalries with Yoshikaze, Tochi Noshin, who else? Uh, Mitaki Yumi and him battled. Him and Takeyasu battled. I mean, some of his early career doesn't get mentioned as much because it didn't lead to U shows. But man, he had some epic battles with some of these guys. Best Ozeki promoted in the last decade statistically. Did you say peak? Because <laughs> you're right. Well, that's how I think it's pronounced. Did you listen to the Takikesho song from Grand Sumo Breakdown on their Aki Review show? I did not. I'll have to go check that out. Your Takikesho video was short and sweet and right to the point, just like Takikesho himself. That was kind of the point. I thought to myself... Taki Keisho came in so hard and fast and ready to rumble, and then he was out just as quick. Can I make a 59-second tribute that encapsulates all of that? Hopefully I did. Onosho was a big rival early on, too. Oh, yeah, Onosho. Same age. Back to work, the audio only if this is trash, but it is what it is, loving the show. I think this might be our best live stream and it may have taught me that we can do things like this in other live streams. I was always afraid of like videos getting taken down, but I mean, this is fair use. This is free available at the Sumo Kyokai website. Like you could come right off of the stream and watch this video again. Um, I'm talking in between it. So I'm not doing anything that isn't fair use. So maybe we can do more things like this in the future. Maybe like if we're focusing on a different wrestler, we can find some stuff or we can watch some of the funny things, you know, keep the live streams hopping. Takakesho rivals Kayo. He may have one last Yusho, but he's still arguably the greatest Ozeki ever. <clears throat> he had two missed opportunities too, where he could have had six and probably would have been Yokozuna. For such a small guy to have such a large impact... I think only now in retirement will people really appreciate what he was. <clears throat> and isn't that the way life works? You'll have to listen to it on Apple Podcasts and not YouTube because YouTube is a dick. Yeah, you, you can't do anything on YouTube. That's why I'm always afraid to do anything. Please don't take this down, JSA. Yeah, I hope they don't. <laughs> I really hope I don't get a copyright strike when this whole thing is over. But I'm not showing new footage. And it's all free and available on their website. So I should be okay. Um, the Sumo Short, it, like I said, it got a copyright claim, but not a copyright strike. So it should be fine. Keisho had four Yusho and half the time Kaiho had five. GG, does that mean gotta go? Well, thank you for coming, Kali Wally. Please um, go back and watch this live when I make it public. We did a lot of fun things in the beginning that you missed. Um, this was, our, this was a good live stream. I thought it was worth it to take some chances for Takikesho's sake. 
Um, I enjoyed this a lot. Thank you all for coming in. Thank you for watching with me. Um, I am sad and it's going to be hard to watch Sumo without him. But on the flip side, I'm really excited about all the new things he's going to do. I'm excited to do the Where is Taki K show, you know, in the hallways and stuff. And I'm excited that he's not going to hurt himself anymore. Because really, it was painful. It was very painful. I will never forget the Ichi Nojo match. I really, that's why it was so prominent in the short. Like that stuck with me his entire rest of his career. I, every time he got injured, I thought about that. And so like, I'm happy that he doesn't have to get hurt anymore. I, I want a really good life for him. Keisha will be one of the biggest what if Rikishi ever. He was so close to making Yukazuna and he was so affected by injuries. Yeah. You know what, though? I was reading the Japanese comments on, like, this tribute video we just watched because you can translate them now. Um, and there were such positive things. I Like I said, I think people will look back on him so much more fondly than they did while he was fighting. Except for us. We already know. <laughs> the generally acknowledged greatest Ozeki in modern era was Takunohana's father. Was he Takunohana as well? Taki Keisha was forever the first guy I actively started rooting for. Me too, ha bob gab. Good night, y'all. Thanks again. It was great to go from Keiko to talking and watching Sumo. Thank you, GR Sumo. Awesome when you come around. Still sad that we don't get to see the plop no more. Well, when he becomes a judge, the plop will probably come back, and you can't hate on him, Mitch. He's got to be the one judge you can't hate on. If this gets taken down, guess we do this again? Yep. Just keep doing it. I can't translate them on my old ass phone, but good for everyone else. <laughs> yes. Well, maybe one day I'll, I'll take a few seconds to read comments on one of our live streams. Because Taka Keisho is going to be in every stream. He's going to show up any chance I can talk about him. So, he's not gone from 42 Opinions. He's just gone from the 42 Opinions. There will always be a bonus Taka Keisho feature, should there be something to discuss. Yes, Takunohana 2's father was Takunohana 1. I thought so. Look at that. Takunohana, greatest Ozeki ever. Taki Keisho, third. If you want to say you show is what makes you great, I'd say Taki Keisho is the best. But that's just me. First, Takunohana, Konishiki, Chio Taikai, Hokutenyu, Takunoami are all up there for best. Um, they all didn't make Yokozuna, right? Now, talking Ohana, the father, did he make Yokozuna? Because usually when you talk about best Ozeki, it's also the caveat of never made Yokozuna. Takakesha during a mono e Guys, can we just stand here for a little longer? That walk up the stairs really took it out of me. No, no, no. This is a misunderstood thing. He has a problem with his nose. He can't breathe through his nose because it's busted up. And so... He's a mouth breather. So that's why it looks like he's always out of breath because he can't breathe through his nose. Have you seen how many nosebleeds he's had? A lot of them. Takanohana 1 was like Takakesho, very small, but unlike him, very skinny while still performing very well. Takanohana 1 did not make Yokozuna. Okay. He gets, he gets the top spot then. I'll give it to him. Taki Keisha wouldn't complain. Man, that hair cutting ceremony is going to be rough. Oh my goodness, is that going to be rough? I do not want to think about that. But I'm kind of looking forward to seeing short haired Taki Keisho. Keisho also has a very small mouth. Yes, I'm telling you, when he starts to lose weight, his whole life's going to get better. He's just way too short to be that heavy. Who else is excited for Magashira 3, Chirana, Umi, and Magashira 4, Oshoma? Gonna be wild. Well, then someone set up a GoFundMe to let Taki Keisho get a nose job then. All he's got to do is lose some weight and things are going to get better for him. Taki Keisho was the Ozeki that grinded the most. That's what makes him the greatest. No question. He grinded it out, man. I don't think anybody can beat him for spirit. But I didn't watch before then, so. 
Keisha's haircutting will probably be the biggest event since Hakuho's retirement. I think it will be. I mean, they're not talking about Taka Keisho too much in the news, like John Gunning was saying. Because I actually think maybe it's a little painful for people. Because it's hard to believe that someone like him is just done. That his career's over. And they want to talk about the positive things like Ono Sato. When they get to that haircutting, I think it's going to be huge. I think he's going to be way more loved than he was during his career. People are going to go back and look at old clips and say, wow, he was awesome, wasn't he? And and please, jump on the bandwagon. I'm all about it. All right, guys. This has been a very long live stream, which I planned because Taki Keisho deserves the best. But I will have to go soon. I want to end on... A nice little picture of him with the U show. It's extra painful for us. It is painful. There's no question about it. Oh, the pain is in my gut. Going into November and knowing that Taki Keisho's name isn't even on that lighted board. I just can't. I can't do it. I can't do it. Monoe Judge Taki Keisho. Wait, was that a Hakuho guy? Yes. Okay, he lost. <laughs> <laughs> I love that one. Don't know. We might get a Maegashira 2 Toronto Umi. We're excited for that possibility. The JSA didn't know what they had until he's gone. Of course. They didn't know what they had with Hakuho. And they, they kept thinking Hakuho would keep going. And they were very upset when he retired. The JSA, man, they could have they could have helped Takakesho out. But no. There's a lot of guys who got, you know, got more, more, uh, credit and support than Taki Keisho and now it's done so I hope you have fun with that JSA you better not screw anybody else up Taki Keisho may have had a lot of haters but plenty of people loved him too he's extremely polarizing for all the people who really really don't like him there are people who really really love him there's not a lot of in the middle there's some there's some but there's a lot of like oh you hate him well I love him and that's just the eternal battle. You know, do you love him or hate him? Years from now, he will be remembered for all the right reasons. Yep. That's how it goes. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one, Spanky. I like it. We need to start a GoFundMe for Maria to go to Taki Keisho's hair cutting and raise even more so Maria can cut his hair. Yeah. Yeah. Go with that. This is why GR Sumo is here. Go with that. I wonder if Taki Keisha will fight his son like, ha <gasps> like Hakuho and Kakadu for the final bout. I know he will. <gasps> about that too, because that's going to be the cutest thing ever. One of my favorite things about that tribute was where they froze at Taki Keisha looking at his son holding the cup. I'm like, <gasps> if that is not the most beautiful image, I don't know what is. There's something about him being a father and having his little son, that's just amazing. And now he can be a coach. And his son can be like the kid who runs around. And maybe he'll be filming someday. And it's just it's just so great. I love it. Monsters thinking about the Bonzake again. Alright guys. We're at 2 hours and 19 minutes. I think safe to say. That it's time to go. I wish Taki Keisho was my dad. That kid has a good. Yes. As long as Taki Keisho stays healthy and alive. Which is very important. His son is going to have the best life. Because his dad's going to care so much about him. Probably so much about him. He's going to say maybe you shouldn't do sumo. It's kind of dangerous. I wonder if Taki Keisho is going to keep his Ozeki stoicness in retirement. It's a great question because all the pictures, he looks kind of, he looks kind of sad, but maybe that's the, it's like, for goodness sakes, he just retired and they're like, here's your track suit. Here's your suit. Come to this event. Here's your little bag. Here's what you're going to have to do. And he literally has to start all over again as a brand new, the, the newest coach. So he went from being at the top, almost the very top, to now being the very bottom rung. What a whirlwind he must be going through right now. 
Taikikeisho versus mini Taikikeisho will be awesome. We have to have the return of the king rule where every video has to be over three hours. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. Not every live stream can be that long because if I were to go three hours, that would be um, midnight. Not planning to do that. But um, I can say that our previews and our recaps, they've been going that long. So who knows? Probably not the preview show because there's not as much to talk about unless Takakesho does something and then he gets 20 minutes of me rambling. Um, but definitely the recaps are starting to just average at three hours. All right, guys, I'm really going this time. Really going. It is good that Keisho got Elder Stock. I think a young Oyakata, Taika Keisho, could make a difference. He's the right temperament. So thank you all for coming. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope nobody takes the stream down. And watch, watch, watch the tribute video and get a bunch of views so that it'll get recommended. And guys, we'll see you in two weeks for the Bonza, guess the Bonza case stream. It will be October 15th, which is a Tuesday, 9.15 Eastern Standard Time. And you guys can talk away about all this Bonza case stuff. I know, Habab Gab, I know it's sad to go, but it is very late. It is 11.23 p.m. in my time zone. I'm starting not to be able to see the chat again. But hey, at least I played a My Hero song. You love My Hero, I'm pretty sure. Good night, Spanky. See you later, Mitch. Thank you for coming by. Good night, Habab Gab. Vote K-Show, popularity poll. Most important election there is. Good night.